Hi, horror film recap here. Today, I'm going to explain the American drama thriller film called Before I Wake. Watch out and take care. It is midnight when a grown man slowly enters a little kid's room. He points a gun at the sleeping child. He seems to be nervous and apologizes to him, calling him Cody. A sudden commotion makes him pull the trigger. The gunfire awakens Cody. The man breaks down in tears and apologizes to him. Cut to a few months later, a couple named Jesse and Mark Hobson have been approved as foster parents. They sit across Natalie, a worker at the foster care. She tells them about an eight-year-old boy named Cody. Cody's father was never around, and his mother died when he was only three. Cody has not had many good experiences in the foster care system. His former foster parents had abandoned him, leaving him to live alone for about a month before he was rescued. He has sleep issues, but he is resilient and smart. Natalie thinks he would be perfect for the Hobsons to foster. Having found the perfect kid for them, the Hobsons returned home happily that day. Their young son, Sean, had died by accidentally drowning in a bathtub. This had a huge impact on the couple, but now they are ready to welcome a new member to their family. At home, they redecorate the house to make it fit for Cody. Mark takes down every picture of Sean from the walls and only leaves their family picture. He also sets an extra handle on the wall beside the bathtub. Later that day, Jessie tells her self-help group about their decision to foster Cody. Everyone there is happy for her. Jessie has had trouble sleeping since Sean's death. The next day, the couple impatiently waits for Cody to arrive. Natalie's car parks in their driveway and they rush to see Cody. He wishes the couple a good morning. He brings with him a box that Mark helps him carry inside. As Cody is looking around the house, the family picture with Sean on, seems to have caught his eyes. He stares at it, as Mark tells him about his collection of games. The adults then take him to his new room which he loves, especially the curtains with butterflies on them. Natalie tells them that Cody likes to collect butterflies as a hobby. Later that night, the couple tuck Cody to bed, but after they leave, Cody sits up and opens the box that he brought with him. Inside is a can of soda and a book about butterflies. He sips on the soda and starts reading the book under the blanket using a torchlight. He doesn't sleep at all. The following day is his first day at school. That day at school, Cody meets Annie and befriends her. Jesse is folding Cody's laundry that day when she finds his secret box. Inside is his book about butterflies, several cans of soda, and a bottle of stimulants. When she tucks him to bed at night, she asks him about the box. According to him, the stimulants and cans of soda are to help him not fall asleep. He adds that when he falls asleep, the canker man comes. Thinking that the child just has nightmares, Jesse dismisses it. She tells him that the man will go away with little reasoning. However, Cody believes that the canker man ate his mother and is always with him. Jesse puts him to bed and goes to Mark in their living room. She feels sorry for going through Cody's box. She feels like she has invaded his privacy, but Mark assures her it is for his own good. Some time later, they are watching a movie together. Then all of a sudden, several butterflies fly into the room. They look holographic. The couple is beyond surprised to see this many at once. Mark captures one in a jar for Cody, while Jesse closes the windows. As the windows close, all of the butterflies disappear. The couple is left stunned. Jesse has a hard time falling asleep that night. She goes down to the kitchen where she hears an odd noise. She looks around to see if there is an intruder. Suddenly, Sean appears in the dark living room. Jesse is in shock, a glass falls from her hand and breaks. When she looks up again, Sean is gone. She goes to Cody's room to check on him. He sleeps peacefully. Cut to the next day, Jesse is back with the self-help group. She tells them about seeing Sean. According to her, Sean seems angry to be replaced by Cody. Later that day, Mark notices Cody staring at their family picture with Sean in it. He talks to the couple about Sean. They lovingly answer all Cody's questions. At night, the butterflies appear again. They look around when suddenly, Sean appears in the room. He is wearing the same clothes as their family picture. The couple is beyond surprised. They walk up to him to touch him. When they do, they realize that he is actually real. But Sean suddenly disappears. At the same time, we see Cody wake up. He comes down and apologizes to the couple. The breakfast the following day is awkward. Jesse and Mark do not know what to say, they are still in shock. But they believe that Sean's appearance has something to do with Cody. Cody apologizes to them for something. Later, when Cody is back from school, the family watches videos of Sean. It is a Christmas video, and all three of them look very happy in it. That night after Cody falls asleep, Mark and Jesse stay in the living room. Suddenly, the room lights up with Christmas lights, and a Christmas tree appears too. Just then, Sean appears wearing the clothes he did in the video. The video has come to life. Mark and Jesse are left speechless. They finally realize that Cody is blessed with supernatural power. All of his dreams come to life while he sleeps. However, when he wakes up, the dream vanishes. Cut to the next day, Cody draws a figure of a man and proceeds to scribble over it. He tells Annie that it is the canker man. Sometimes when Cody scribbles over him, it keeps the man away. Jesse puts the pictures of Sean back for Cody to see. She wants to meet her dead son again. However, Mark is not fond of the idea. He accuses Jesse of using Cody to fulfill her desires. But Jesse insists that Cody is the only one who can help them heal. Irritated, Mark puts the photo frames away. The next day, Cody brings a butterfly trapped in a jar to school. But his bully, Tate, breaks it. Cody has been staying up all night in fear of of the canker man, so he almost falls asleep 
in the class. During the lunch break, he gets permission to rest in the class for a while. He is alone there when he falls asleep. Cody dreams of the canker man. Cody's blessing is also a curse. Along with his dreams, his nightmares are real too. As Cody sleeps, his bully enters the classroom and faces the canker man. Annie sees the canker man indulge Tate and yells in fear. Cody wakes up, but Tate has disappeared. The police arrive at the school to investigate the disappearance. Cody cannot risk sleeping now so he takes coffee to avoid sleeping. That night, Cody reads the book about butterflies like he usually does. Suddenly, he hears a noise. He checks under the bed when suddenly, Tate's ghost appears in front of him and drags him under the bed. Cody tries to fight and screams, I am awake. Meanwhile, Sean appears before Jesse. He too is saying, I am awake. Cody yells loudly which makes the dreams go away. Jesse rushes to him, asks him what is wrong, and tries to calm him down. The following day, Jesse talks to a doctor about Cody's insomnia. Meanwhile, Cody and Mark go shopping and buy stuff for Cody's room. When they get back home, two police officers are in front of their house. They want to interview Cody about Tate's disappearance. Later that day, Cody asks the couple about Sean's death, but the couple dismisses the questions. Jesse mixes the prescribed sleeping pills with Cody's milk, unbeknownst to her husband, and he drinks it. Marks informs Cody that Sean had died from drowning as he tucks him to bed. The drug makes Cody sleep peacefully that night. Jesse and Mark are in the living room again. Sometime later, Sean appears in front of them, but he looks evil and vomits water. Mark rushes up to wake Cody, but he cannot wake up because of the drug. Soon, the dream turns into a nightmare. A tall creature appears in front of Jesse in the living room. She runs to Cody's room and locks the door. Mark is worried about Cody not waking up. Just then, Jesse confesses to have drugged him. She watches in horror as the creature devours Mark. Suddenly, she falls unconscious. She wakes up in the morning to Cody calling 911. Mark is nowhere to be found. It is as if he has disappeared into thin air. The police arrive at the scene and accuse Jesse of drugging the kid. They believe that Jesse and Mark are abusing Cody, so they take him away, as Jesse cries for them to stop. Jesse then goes to Natalie, but she too accuses her of child abuse and tells her to go away. However, Jesse notices Cody's file on her desk and manages to steal it. Through the file, she finds out about a man named Waylon Young. He is the father of the second family Cody was fostered by. She goes to see him. Young tells her that he and his wife fostered Cody for 15 months before his dream swallowed his wife too. He was so angry at Cody that he almost killed him. This is the scene we saw at the beginning of the film. He then asks her to kill Cody so that no others can be victims of his nightmares, but Jesse refuses. From the file, she also finds Cody's mother's information and her hospital reports. She decides to go to the hospital and investigate further. The hospital provides her with her mother's belongings. It consists of a pillow shaped like a butterfly and her journal. Reading the journal and the reports, Jesse finds the secret about the canker man's existence. She then goes to the orphanage Cody is staying at with the pillow. Cody hasn't slept for several nights, so his caretakers are worried about him. Unknown about the canker man, they give him a tranquilizer to help him sleep. Cody dreams of the man that night as well. When Jesse walks into the building, she sees several nightmares in every room. First, she is startled by a flutter of black moths, then she sees Sean drowning in the bathtub. Next, she sees a horrifying looking woman twist Cody's head. Lastly, she sees Mark appears in front of her. Scared, she closes the door to that room. She finally reaches Cody's room. The canker man runs towards her to attack her, but instead of running away, she shows him the butterfly pillow. The canker man stops when he sees it. Jesse slowly hugs the man. As she does that, the man turns into Cody, who then disappears. Jesse picks a sleeping Cody up and takes him outside. Natalie has been indulged by the canker man and comes back to life. She sees Jesse take him away but lets her. They see several beautiful butterflies flying in the hallway. His nightmare has changed into a magical dream. Cut to the next day, Jesse tells Cody that his mother's name was Andrea and that she died of pancreatic cancer. Andrea had found out about Cody's gift when he was little. She has written it in her journal. But when Cody was just three, Andrea was diagnosed with cancer. Cody had seen his mother on the verge of death, battling cancer. She was thin and bald at that time. Since he was too young to recognize her as his mother, his little mind made up that it was the canker man. He was told that cancer had taken his mother away. With time, he made up the canker man, so he believed that he took her away. This began his nightmares. Now that Cody knows that the canker man is not real, Jesse believes that his nightmare will not come back. However, Mark and other people that the canker man had taken still haven't come back. Jesse believes that as Cody learns to control his power, there might be a possibility of them coming back. Cody thanks Jesse for bringing him home and calls her mom. He begins to learn how to control his magical gift. Thank you for watching.